morning, day 61. A few minutes later, but I love that the sunrise is a process. <laughs> Lucky for me. It's not a hard and set moment that I, that I miss. It's a process. And I love that. I just love that. It works for me. Um, and yeah, that is, um, that's actually an important point to maybe even spend just a moment on because if you look on an app or, you know, like for research purposes or for data purposes or they do have to give sunrise sort of a moment, you know, that first moment that the, that it starts to cross the horizon sunset as well. Um, and so some people think, Oh, I've, I've missed it. You know, no, it's a process. Um, they've got to quantify things to be able to, you know, write about them, put them th on calendars on a, on a, you know, like, don't like broaden your mind a little bit. Sometimes when you think about things, <laughs> Um, don't get stuck in a moment because that will trip you up. It will trip you up if you are like down into the details that much and and striving for perfection in things. That is like a sign of perfectionism. And there's nothing that will kill your <laughs> mojo, what you want to do in life and how you even perceive life more than perfectionism. And I know uh, anybody familiar with the Enneagram, I haven't talked about that in a while. I'm a nine, but I have a heavy one wing, like I'm really lopsided. <laughs> and I'm married to a one, which is the perfectionist. So I strive, that is like, has been my path to peace um, in life was to do things well, do things good, perfectly, um, and, be the perfect person for other people. Um, anyway, the do-gooder, the ultimate do-gooder. And meanwhile, I was failing myself and not really making other people as happy as I thought I was. I was very self-deceived. Um, but anywho, on with today's little Bible reading. And I, I got some extra sleep, so that's why I am... Um, a few minutes later than normal and thank you god that i only had a couple pages to read this morning but i wanted to pull out a nugget from uh first kings chapter 19 the end of the story when elisha elijah is told to go and make elisha the next prophet. And I've heard some people pronounce that name Al Alicia, but um, I've also heard pronounce Elisha. So I'm going to go with the, that. And boy, after, after the big showdown um, and Jezebel hears about it, Elijah is on the run. He's back in the wilderness again. He is feeling like, oh, I did all of this. Like I can't do it anymore. Like he is just down and out. Uh, and he goes to sleep and he's woken up by an angel who's given him some food and he gets some rest and he gets more food and then he gets the message to um, go find Elisha and make him the next prophet of course I'm leaving some details out but um, so even Elijah who want, had this great victory like nobody said just because you do what God says that it makes your life easy or comfortable. And there won't be moments when you're like, that you just want to give up and die. Like, literally, that's what Elijah was, Elijah was going through. But the Lord, in the morning, revived him, gave him what he needed to keep going. And so he goes and finds Elisha. And it's a very short story. And we have to sometimes just th take things on face value because, you know, times were just so different then. And we have to kind of, we can infer what it means. But he basically says, Elisha was out in the fields plowing and Elijah walks up to him and puts his cloak on him. And not even much of a conversation happens. It's just like, okay, here you go. You know what this means, right? 
And so Elijah, Elisha says, okay, let me go say goodbye to my family. And uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> and then Elijah or says, I want to make sure you understand what this means to you. And take a moment to think about that. And so Elijah burns, kills his ox, burns them, and has a, a feast with his family, a goodbye party. So I titled today, Burning the Ships. And this is a really, this is so important, y'all. Um, when you really want to make a change in your life and you don't want to spend your time straddling the fence white knuckling things like you can do it but you're not all that happy about it and that's not fully what you want to do but you do it anyway and you're just always l living with this like tension of oh yeah look look i'm doing it i'm, I'm different but inside it's like Ugh. you're you're not quite there and there's a part of you that's still holding on. And that's what Elisha, by killing his ox um, and not giving himself a way out, like he mentally, he was like, old life done, new life here. Even though it is a process, um, but there was a decision. There was just a line in the sand drawn and then he followed it up with an action that he couldn't go back on. Well, he could, we can all change our minds and we can go back, but he made it really hard for himself. Like ox back then, that would be like us giving away, you know, everything that helps us make a living. Our cars, our whatever it is, you know, we're like, whatever it is that's helping us be the person we are now and supporting that in our livelihood, if we just gave it all away and decided to maybe go be a missionary. Um, and maybe a lot of missionaries actually do that. I don't know. And cause it makes it hard for them to know that there's a comfy home waiting for them anytime it gets tough. And so you got like, you've got to mentally, and even maybe with your foot, somehow with your physical surroundings or having conversations with people that love you and want to support you, but may, <laughs> Um, in sort of their own hearts and unwittingly sabotage you and not support you because there might be something that you're doing and this change that you're making that's threatening them and they don't even know it. Like this stuff happens. It happens. So you've got to really go all in. Um, and we've talked about this in different ways. The surrendering, commitment, you know, how all of that, is, it's just so different. If you leave yourself a little wiggle room with your brain, it will take it. It will take it. And Elisha and Elijah seemed to know that. Like, they were like, look, dude, this is like, this is it. Old life, new life. What are you going to do to show yourself? Because I don't think it was really about showing Elijah it was about Elisha showing himself and coming to terms with this himself and going all in. So he demonstrated that. And I think this is similar to in the New Testament when we'll see that Jesus, you know, calls people and says, you've got to walk away from your old life. If you want to follow me, you've got to give it all up. Um, Anyway, I'm going to start turning the other way so you can see the beautiful sun. Oh, there. There we go. Beautiful sunrise. So, going all in. Burning burning the boats. And you hear that term a lot. And maybe you wondered what it means. And ana analogously, I think I said that right, um, there is the image of being on an island and having to tra tra traverse a sea. And maybe you're in the land of island of comfort or even pain, but you see an island over there that you wanna go to and you wanna live over there. And you, when you get there, you burn the boats. You don't give yourself an option to go back. 
And that's like, there's a little, there's some brain science in there. I love um, having my coaching ed education and skills now and even hours and hours of practice now, thousands of hours. And um, and even working with clients and myself and a lifetime with myself. Hello, jeez. Um, and just being human when you know, like if you give yourself the opportunity to go back because your brain has these neural pathways, it already knows how to be one way. And we think, and we can tell ourselves, well, I'm doing all this to learn the new way. But man, those old ways are still there. They don't go away just because you learn a new way. The old ways are still there. And you know, some people don't like hearing this. They're like, but I've done all this work to be this new way. I should just be able to be this way and not put up guardrails or burn the boats or give myself, you know, I shouldn't have to even worry about that. Sorry. You gotta respect your brain and the power of your brain. And you've got to put some measures in place, um, like me even doing this, like part of me kind of burning the boats was to not keep this quiet, to do it publicly and getting even a few people saying, oh, wow, your, your morning videos and, and your morning writing um, really are a part of my day now. Whoa, I, that's big. Um, and I didn't know that would happen. But even me publicly stating, like, this is what I'm doing, um, you know, I, and then I follow, started following through step by step, you know, I'm at day 60 now, and I've built the habit, and I've just made this even part of, like, my identity, like, this is just what you do, and I've kind of, I went all in with this, um, with this combination, this trifecta of waking up early, getting productive early, um, and spending time with God, like in that, and letting that, him get the first fruits of my day, my brain. And then for now, like the rest of my day is like, it's mine. You know, if you get this done, it's a, it's a winning day. And even, even when you sleep, <laughs> accidentally sleep in and you've only got a few minutes that's no excuse you still get it done I burned the boats I did that with um, my relationship with alcohol unfortunately I can't do that with my relationship with food <laughs> gotta eat so that one's gonna be a little bit more trickery so I'm still kind of but I'm still all in with the process like I'm not giving up it's just going to take me a while to figure out my unique combination. We'll talk about that concept another day. So I'm still in that process of even figuring out what my body will respond to. But, mental, but I'm all in with the process. I'm not giving up. I know it will happen. I've burned the boats with making it happen. And, and making what happen, though. I'm gonna go on off on a little tangent here because this is also important. When we're talking about the islands and burning the boats, like make sure the island that you're going to is the right one and that you've defined it in the right way. So for example, you know, of course for me, not drinking alcohol was very clear, like no, no alcohol. Like some things are very clear and simple. The, um, Sometimes the weight loss or fitness journey looks different for people. And for some people it might be, they've set a stake in the ground that it's a, tied to a number and maybe even body fat percentage or a size. Not true for me. Um, because I really drilled deeper than that. Like that to me was too superficial and it was probably going to be too hard, even if I was able to achieve it, to maintain it. So long term at an identity level, what is it that I really want from uh, uh, being at a lower weight? Weight. That's where you're, you can get to the magic because then you're like really, you know, are clear on where you're going and what island you're going to live on so that then you can really be committed to burning the boats. But if you're not sure and you 
picked out the wrong island and you go all in, that, you, so you want to really be careful first about defining where you are now and where you want to be. Not only what it looks like, but what it feels like, what it's helping you do, how it's adding to your life. Because that's what we really want. We're trying to add to our experience of life and enhance it. We're not just trying to do something. Because there's, a, you know what? I'm just going to call it like it is. Uh, and I know a lot of these people, and especially because I'm a woman, I know a lot of other women, and I know perfectionist women. And they have it in their heads, I am going to be a size, we'll just pick six, whatever, and uh, 120 pounds, and it needs to look this way, and you know, it's tied to a, a specific measure, and not that measurements are not important, but I will tell you, there's a lot of miserable, thin, beautiful women out there. So it is not the attainment of a look that makes anybody happy. They have set their eyes on the wrong island. They have burned the ships with the wrong island and the wrong goal. <laughs> and so that was definitely a mistake. I've been there too. I've been 115 pounds and in the skinny jeans. Like I've done, been there, done that. I was still thought I wasn't good enough then. That's the curse of women, right? Um, so, I set my island. There's a different island I want to go to. I want to be able to have a fitness level that allows me to be active in, with my grandchildren when I get blessed with that. Um, being able to go kayak at age 70 or 80. Um, being able to hike up a mountain. Um, maybe not Mount Everest, but you know, a local mountain that requires a good bit of stamina for a couple of hours. You know, I want freedom and the fitness that will support that type of lifestyle and um, taking care of my joints and my weight that makes it uh, more freeing. Like I can still do those things, but sometimes it's a challenge, but I'm working on it. I'm getting there. So I have a very different island that I'm also going to and measured by different standards that I know will be a life of of um, integrity and freedom and that's measured in a different way than when you would typically think. So that would be the other thing that I would include with this. Like, make sure you know where you're going and what you're committed to. And then that's what you're, you know, that's a good place to be committed to. You know what I mean? Don't be superficial. Don't be measured by other people around you and compared because also being in the world of real estate, I know a lot of miserable people that live in beautiful, big, beautiful houses. So those things, the trappings of the world and looking like your neighbor or like the person that you've picked out in the magazine or whatever, that doesn't, that doesn't bring a fulfilling life. Um, so for most people, if that's what it's all about in and of itself, it's just the things and looking like a thing. You've got to go deeper than that. And you've got to really think about what you want to feel like and what a successful life feels like to you. Um, and then burn your boats and go all in with that. All right. <sighs> Have a great Wednesday. Bye.